virtual threads were released as a feature in JDK21, and they represent a paradigm shift in how Java handles concurrency. Let's talk more about what these are and whether you should care. In this video, we'll start off understanding how the JVM currently handles threads and concurrency. We will examine its limitations, evaluate some options to overcome the limitations, say by using asynchronous programming, talk about the downside of asynchronous programming, and then talk about virtual threads, which allows a Java application to scale without the downsize and complexity of asynchronous programming. Finally, we'll talk about the applications which can most benefit from virtual threads. So this will give you a good understanding of the mechanism and challenges of handling concurrent requests and how virtual threads fit in the equation to solve the problem. Every statement or method execution in Java happens in a thread as a part of a request. These threads, which are called platform threads, are wrappers around the OS threads. And so every request in Java equates to a platform thread, which equates to an OS thread. OS threads are costly to create and are finite in number. So concurrent requests in Java, each consuming an OS thread, is limited to the number of OS threads. So this thread per request model is how Java works. It allows a context for requests, provides local variable stack. In case of an error, we can look at the thread stack trace to debug. The profiler can look at the thread to build the profile. So definitely it's useful and also equates Java unit of concurrency platform threads to the OSS unit of concurrency, the OS threads. The scalability of server applications is governed by Little's law, which relates throughput, latency, and concurrency. So throughput, which is the number of requests per second an application can process, is directly related to latency or the time taken to process the request times concurrency or the number of requests a system can handle concurrently. Let's understand it by an example. So let's say it takes our app one second to process a request. Let's say we have 10 OS threads, meaning we can launch 10 of these requests concurrently, one in each thread. Then our throughput is 10 requests per second. Let's say we now need to scale our app. Our app is getting very popular and now we are receiving 100 requests per second. To achieve this throughput, given that our latency is one second, we need to up our concurrency to 100. But we have a limitation here in terms of only 10 OS threads being available. So even though we have spare system resources like CPU and memory to handle those additional requests, the limiting factor is the number of OS threads. So for the application to keep up, the number of threads must grow as throughput grows. Okay, so what are some of the other ways to scale? With a synchronous operation like making a database connection or adding a file to an OS, these are operations which might take some time and the thread has to wait for these to finish before going on to the next operation. We can make these operations asynchronous. So if the blocking operation, say writing a file, is taking too much time, the thread can be released to the thread pool and take on other tasks. When the long running task completes, it issues a call back that the operation is complete and another thread can pick it up from there. So with this thread pooling or thread sharing model with asynchronous programming, you can increase concurrency but at a high cost. Now your style of programming has changed. Your request has to be broken in these asynchronous units and then pieced together later. So we are moving away from the Java language's basic composition operators or implicit style of sequencing to a spaghetti code which we piece together. And then we also lose the advantage of a thread model in terms of the thread stacks having no usable context. Debuggers cannot step through request handling logic. Tools cannot profile an operation's cost, etc. Our application's unit of concurrency, the asynchronous pipeline, is no longer the platform's unit of concurrency. So these are some costly overheads and trade-offs. Virtual threads gives us the best of both. It allows us to maintain the thread context of processing a request, at the same time delinking the one-to-one -one relation between a platform thread and an OS thread. There is no longer a one-to-one -one mapping between a virtual thread to OS thread, 
Rather, a large number of virtual threads are mapped to an OS thread. Just as operating systems give the illusion of plentiful memory by mapping a large virtual address space to a limited amount of physical RAM, a Java runtime can give the illusion of plentiful threads by mapping a large number of virtual threads to a smaller number of OS threads. Virtual threads is an instance of java.lang and is not tied to a particular OS thread. The requests run in the context of a virtual thread and when they need to make a blocking call, the runtime makes a non-blocking OS call and suspends the virtual thread until it can be resumed later. So these are threads which are cheap to create and almost infinitely available and they get the same benefits of thread level context and request tracing as before. Since virtual threads are cheap, they should not be pooled and a new virtual thread should be created for each task. So these threads preserve the reliable thread per request style while utilizing the hardware optimally. Which applications can benefit from virtual threads? So the applications which can benefit most are the ones where there is little or no asynchronous programming done. And even for those kind of applications, using virtual threads can allow us to not use asynchronous programming and the associated complexity which comes with it, but rather use virtual threads to achieve the same functionality. Further, it's worth mentioning that the virtual threads themselves do not decrease the latency. So if a task takes one second to do the job, say writing a file to an OS, it cannot reduce that, but it can help increase concurrency or throughput given that our server has spare capacity which we can take advantage of to increase concurrent operations. So hopefully, this video gives you a good understanding of what virtual threads are, how they work, and what use they provide us. Thanks for watching.